The second problem for this week is on a wheelbarrow. A person is pushing a wheelbarrow up an incline, as you can see in the figure below. Here, there are two questions that we'll be answering. How much force does this person have to generate, and in what direction does that force act? And what is the reaction of the wheel at A? Just to give a little bit of context, this end here, A, is a wheel, so it can roll up the ramp, which is inclined at 20 degrees. The person is holding the wheelbarrow at C and is exerting a force to push it up the ramp. And finally, we have this 500 Newton force acting downwards, which is the weight of whatever the wheelbarrow is filled with. As always, we'll start off by establishing our coordinate system. We'll pick up, right, and counterclockwise as our positive sign conventions. Next, we have to draw an FPD for the system. First off, the ramp is not part of the wheelbarrow, but I'll still include it in the drawing to remind us that the wheelbarrow is acting on an incline. For the FBD of the wheelbarrow, I'll simplify it into a beam and draw in all the forces and reactions. We keep the downward 500 Newton force and add reactions at points A and C as there are contact forces at these points. The contact force at A is a roller support, so it will be free to move in the direction parallel to the ramp, but it will have a reaction acting perpendicularly to the ramp, and I'll call this AN. Since AN is acting at an angle, we can then break it down further into its X and Y components. So we'll get AN times sine of 20 degrees for the X component, and AN times cosine of 20 degrees for the Y component. And finally, we have the contact force at C, which has an unknown magnitude and direction. So we'll represent this unknown force by its X and Y components, CX and CY. Once we solve for these component forces, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for our resultant force, C. I'll assume that CX and CY are acting along our positive directions even though intuitively we know that CX should be acting to the left. Having our arrow point to the right will just make our analysis a bit more clear. Moving on to the equilibrium equations, we'll start with our moment calculations first, and I'll pick C as our turning point. So the sum of M about C equals zero will account for the components of AN and the 500 Newton force. Our equation will be zero equals negative an times cosine of 20 degrees, since it will act in the negative clockwise direction, times its normal distance to c of 1.3 meters, which is this 0.5 meters plus the 0.8 meters, plus an times sine of 20 degrees, since it will act in the positive counterclockwise direction, times its normal distance to c of 0.2 meters plus 500 newtons, since it will also act in the positive counterclockwise direction, times its normal distance to C of 0.8 meters. See here how both of these terms have AN? We can combine them together to get negative 1.153 meters times AN, and then add this 500 newtons times 0.8 meters, which will give us 400 newton meters. Rearranging this equation for AN, we will get a value of 346.9 newtons. Next, calculating the sum of forces in the horizontal direction, the sum of fx equals zero will account for an times sine of 20 degrees and cx. Our equation will be zero equals an times sine of 20 degrees plus cx. This gives us a value of negative 118.6 newtons for cx. As you can see here, we did get a negative value, which tells us that CX will act to the left, opposite to our assumption. And this makes sense since we know that it will require a force to the left to push the wheelbarrow along the ramp. Finally, calculating the sum of forces in the vertical direction, the sum of FY equals zero will account for AN times cosine of 20 degrees, the 500 Newton force, and CY. Our equation will be zero equals an times cosine of 20 degrees minus 500 newtons plus cy. Rearranging the equation for cy, we will get a value of 174.0 newtons. Interpreting our results, we can say that the force at c 
is a vector with an x component of negative 118.6 newtons and a y component of 174 newtons. To answer the questions from this problem, how much force does this person have to generate and in what direction does the force act? Since we found the x and y components of the force C, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the resultant force C, giving us a force of 210.6 newtons. To find the direction in which this force acts, we will use some basic trigonometry and supplementary angles to find this angle alpha, which is 124.3 degrees from positive x. So this person will have to generate a force of 210.6 newtons at an angle of 124.3 degrees from positive x. The next question was what is the reaction of the wheel at A, which we called AN, and from before, Using the sum of moments about A, we found AN to be 346.9 newtons.